Good afternoon, good evening, good morning from wherever in the world you are watching us and participating in this webinar. And welcome to everybody about this uh, <clears throat> new uh, seminar online about uh, Taiji Men, uh, which is titled Telling the Truth about uh, Taiji Men uh, victims of uh, abuse and uh, discrimination. The, on the 21st of December 2010, the UN General Assembly proclaimed the 24th of March as the International Day for the Right to the Truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of victims. Why that date? That date is related to the assassination on the 24th of March, 1980, of Archbishop Oscar Arnulfo Romero of El Salvador, then a prominent human rights defender who was killed while celebrating mass. Romero actively denounced violations of the rights of the most vulnerable people and defended the principles of protecting lives promoting human dignity and opposing all forms of violence. Quite often, such peace activists like Gandhi or Martin Luther King are victims of violence and Romero was no exception. My introductory remarks will briefly address four issues. First, some poisonous concepts of truth and fake news. Second, human rights violations, truth and justice. Third, the impunity issue, a consequence of a failing quest for truth. And fourth, lies and truths about Taiji Men. Journalists, human rights defenders, social activists, whistleblowers, police, judges, and many others are truth seekers, as others can be gold miners. Truth is like a diamond. It is precious and it must be protected because it is invaluable. Telling the truth publicly or just investigating about suspicious facts can be a lethal game in some countries run by a dictatorial regime plagued by corruption or mafia groups. Untruths and lies are hiding everywhere and in everything. They pollute the minds and societies. They threaten the economic and social stability of a country. Unfortunately, the production and distribution of fake news or unfounded conspiracy theories has now become an industry in some countries. The term fake news does not have a fixed definition and has been applied broadly to any type of purposefully false information. Fake news often have the aim of damaging the reputation of a person or an entity or making money. Their sponsors, their producers, their propagandists pretend to be informative news, but they are not. Their purpose is to cheat, to deceive, to disinform, to manipulate, to instrumentalize, to pervert transparency, to spread false information with harmful intent for political, geopolitical, economical, or financial gains. Fake news have always existed, but now it is just the new name of lies. The term was first used in the 1890s when sensational reports in newspapers were quite common, but largely unfounded or exaggerated. The perversion of the words fake news and truth now goes so far that in the context of Russia's war on Ukraine, Vladimir Putin calls his own narrative the official political truth 
of the Russian state, Pravda in Russian. <clears throat> From that perspective, any Russian citizen calling for peace in Ukraine or peacefully expressing his opinion about the war or the national army can very quickly become a victim of criminal prosecution and be jailed for 15 years. In Putin's case, propaganda is truth and diverging opinions are fake news, which need to be stifled between the four walls of a prison cell as long as possible. Because of the diversity of false news, researchers are beginning to favor the term information disorder as a more neutral and informative uh, term. My second point, as I said before, is about human rights violations concerning truth and also justice. At the United Nations, the right to have access to the truth is often invoked in the context of gross violations of human rights and grave breaches of humanitarian law. The relatives of victims of summary executions and forced disappearances, missing persons, abducted children, torture, demand to know what happened to them, and rightly so. The truth is a powerful light that is needed to illuminate human consciences and to show the way to walk on in order to repair the damage caused to victims of human rights violations and attacks to human dignity. The truth is the fuel that is needed to put in motion the train of justice. The truth is the blood and the oxygen of human life without which the quest for justice, reparation and accountability cannot start. The next point is about the impunity uh, issue, which is a consequence of a failing quest for truth. Coming back to Archbishop Romero, no one was ever convicted for his assassination. The UN created Truth Commission for El Salvador concluded that Major Roberto Dobuisson, the founder of a right-wing political party, had ordered the killing. In 1997, Pope, Pope John Paul II bestowed upon Romero the title of servant of God, and a cause for his beatification was opened by the church. The cause stalled, but was reopened by Pope Benedict XVI in 2012. Romero was declared a martyr by Pope Francis on the 3rd of February 2015, paving the way for his beatification on the 23rd of May 2015. Pope Francis canonized Romero on the 14th of October 2018. It sometimes happens that some saints of our times can also enjoy some sort of secular canonization, as it is the case here. The truth was firmly established concerning the assassination of the archbishop, and the perpetrator was clearly identified. But justice could not be done and impunity uh, prevailed. And the next point is about the lies and truths concerning uh, the Taiji Man case. Truth and justice are also needed for mm. Tajiban. Here as well, the truth has been established in favor of Tajiban, and the perpetrators have been identified, but impunity also prevails. All the facts are known. April 1997, Dr. Hong, the founder and spiritual master of Tajiban, was indicted by Prosecutor Hu for alleged tax evasion concerning manual donations for the years from 1991 to 96 by Dizzy to their Shifu. This practice 
had forever been recognized as non-taxable and donations had always been tax exempt in the case of Taiji Man. It took Dr. Hong 10 years to be declared non-guilty of tax evasion and all the defendants were acquitted on final appeal at the Supreme Court in July 2007. As the court had ruled that no tax was owed by Taiji Man, the tax bills should be revoked according to the law, but they were not for the year 1992. After many more years of legal procedures, this miscarriage of justice led to the auction of Taiji Man's property. Prosecutor Hu, as well as officials of the National Taxation Bureau and the Administrative Enforcement Agency have been clearly identified as the main perpetrators of Taiji Man's persecution. Now it's time that justice be done. Thank you for your kind attention. And we will now watch a video by uh, Dr. Hong for a few minutes. Go 世界人权宣言序言结束人类心灵深处对于天地民主自由的潮流之下与人民的财产背离人权之道呼吁全体世界公民共同监督公权力的行使
就会成为一股牵引的力量，使国家迈向真民主，人民得享真人权。各位朋友，我们今天所走的每一步都不会白费。终将通往宗教信仰与人权自由的彼岸。让我们为了全人类及后代子孙的共同福祉，挺身而出，共同努力，共创安定、和谐、尊重人权的幸福世界。谢谢大家。Thank you, Dr. Hong, for your inspiring、uh, speech. And we will now go on in this first session of the webinar with、uh, Rosita Chorite from、uh, the European Federation for Freedom of Religion or Belief. The floor is yours. Thank you, Billy.、Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. And thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this in this event.、Um, so we already said that today, the March twenty four, is the International Day for the Religious for the Right to the Truth concerning gross human violations and for the dignity of victims. And、uh, I believe, in a way, it's、uh, it's to give the justice to the to the El Salvador. Archbishop Oscar Romero, that we are having this day, and all of us be talking and remembering. So, just to remind you that he was murdered on 24 of March in 1980 for his public denunciations of human rights abuses in his country. It took 20 years to know the truth about what about who had killed him and who had ordered the assassination. And certainly, by after the 20 years. By that time, the investigators of the murder had already died, and the executor also went into the hiding and has not been found to this date. At least, thanks to the pressure of the international community and to some brave Salvadorian judges, the truth concerning Romero's assassination, or a good part of it, is known today. Those who discuss international justice, which has been the theme of the other Taijiman events. Sometimes do not understand how important it is to know the truth. Transitional justice is defined as the kind of justice rectifying the human rights abuses of the past authoritarian regimes after the transition to a democracy. It includes the punishment of the perpetrators of the gross human rights violations, the identification of the victims, the laws, and the laws to prevent the abuses from happening again in the future. But it also has a force component, disclosing the truth about the abuse, disclosing the truth about the abuses. Sometimes punishing the perpetrators is impossible, as it happened in the Romero's case. There can be no relatives left to identify. Sometimes, however, the whole country can be somewhat identified by telling it the truth, the truth about what happened. It is how acknowledged that transitional justice applies by analogy also to human rights violations perpetrated by democratic or semi-democratic states. In these cases, too, when it becomes clear that the human rights violation occurred, the first and most important justice to be rendered to the victims is publicly telling the truth. There is a macro、uh, dimension of this principle. For, for instance, in the post-Soviet countries, we know how difficult it is. To find and tell the truth about what happened during the years of Soviet oppression, for instance, sometimes there are political reasons for not telling the truth, and even for punishing those who investigate the past. One uh, very uh, gross example is the investigation of the crimes perpetrated by Stalin in Russia, for instance. Historians continuously discover new details, but the problem is that the Russian regime is now glorifying Stalin as a great patriot and hero. In 2018 and 2020, two historians, unrelated to each other, who had、uh, been successfully in successful in discovering previously unknown mass graves of Stalin victims, were suddenly accused of pedophilia, arrested, and sentenced. Coincidentally, even though certainly it's not a coincidence, 
And uh, clearly these accusations of pedophilia were just, um, were fully fabricated just to discredit his, uh, historians uh, and uh, to try to attempt, prevent, uh, and this, uh, it's a desperate attempt to prevent the truth to come out. Another big example is, uh, is today, what is happening in Ukraine, for instance. And because of propaganda and and the the the, the lies, so the, the the Russians, many of Russians, they don't know what is exactly Russian army is uh, is doing in Ukraine, but one day this certainly will change, and uh, and the people will be confronted with the very stressful and profound uh, truth about what is what it was done in Ukraine. On a smaller but not an important scale, the same lies are told when the victims of crimes and human rights violations belong to religious and spiritual minorities, often stigmatized as cults. And the cult is specialized in blaming the victims. They argue that if something had bad happened to cultists, it should be more or less their fault. There have been some spectacular cases recently. The man who assassinated former Japanese Prime Minister, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe claimed he wanted to punish him for his support of the Unification Church. The killer claimed this church is an evil cult and was responsible for the problems of his mother who went bankrupt in 2002 due to her excessive donations to the church. The anti-cultists managed to create a national media campaign blaming Abe and his party for supporting the Unification Church and the later for soliciting important donations from its followers. And for their assassination, media was quite sympathetic to, to, the, to, the, to the killer. On March 9, an ex Jehovah's witness, witness in Hamburg, Germany, killed seven members of his former congregation and one an unborn child. Again, anti-cultists and some media blame the victims, claiming that if the man acted in, it, in this way, it was because he had been destabilized by the Jehovah's Witnesses and by how they treat those who leave the congrega their congregations. Here too, the relatives of the victims and everybody else have a right to know the truth. It should be clarified to what influence and propaganda the killers were exposed and whether they were excited by anti-cult hate speech. This is proved in the case of Abbas assassination who interacted on social media with anti-unification church activists just before the murder. In this webinar, we also ask to know the truth about the Tejimen case. Why was a peaceful organization persecuted in 1996? Why even after the highest courts in Taiwan had declared it innocent. Did the tax authorities continue to issue ill-founded tax bills based on, based on false premises? We always discuss why the Taijimin case has not been solved after more than 26 years. And I believe the solution can only be found politically. However, a political solution needs first a public acknowledge acknowledgement of the truth about the 1996 political purge against several Taiwanese religions and spiritual movements, which started the whole case. This is part of traditional justice too. It also confirms that traditional, ju traditional justice is not about the past only. It is often needed to solve problems of the present as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you, Florista, for your very clear uh, presentation. And I will now give the floor to Marco Respinti, who is director in charge of uh, Bitter Winter magazine. Thank you so much, Willy. And good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Over the years, I came to understand religious liberty as the right to truth. The notion was already present in my framing of the concept. Its substance was there 
I always work implicitly or explicitly on that basis, but I did not know how to formulate the idea on a single clear sentence. Then it came to me as a benevolent culmination when I was invited as a speaker to a conference on religious liberty summoned under that very title, the right to truth. Unfortunately, that conference scheduled to be held in Naples, Italy, never took place due to COVID-19 pandemics. But I want to acknowledge and celebrate the European Federation for Freedom of Belief for planning that conference that never happened and crafting its brilliant title. In fact, the title conveys the very essence of what freedom of religion or belief is. Being free to be religious means to possess two intangible rights. First, to believe that proof does or may exist. Second, to live accordingly as individuals or as a group within the boundaries of natural law and also positive law when the latter does not contradict the former. Human beings as individuals or groups may give different names, shapes, and meanings to truth. They may even have different or contradictory concept of what truth is, but their right to acknowledge the truth remains fundamental. Truth is the material, the material of religious liberty because it is the substance of religion itself. Of course, I use religion here in its most extensive and comprehensive sense, that, that of the universally accepted formula, freedom of religion or belief, or religion, belief, creed, be they a formally organized and institutionalized religion and unorganized spirituality or one of the possible ways of believing, bonding, behaving, and belonging that sociology describes. Religious liberty is then not a right to error. If it were so, then religious liberty would be simply relativism. However, relativism is the least found feature among believers. No believer in whatever religion or spirituality thinks that the set of beliefs he or she holds dear is just equal to any other belief. It doesn't even happen in interreligious, religious or multi-faith contexts, at least when they take seriously the premises of their common work. It has to, to do again with the question of truth. Believers rightly consider their belief as truth. This is what makes them committed human beings able to measure themselves in dialogue with believers of different persuasions. Religion and belief are the most serious human endeavors. Indeed, the most serious of them all since as it was often repeated in this series of webinar on the Taijiman case, they deal with the ultimate questions in life, whatever the answer human beings may give to issues such as the origin and purpose of life, or the existence of God, a deity, a supreme being, or an encompassing spiritual entity. Let me here apply to religion, belief, or creed the same concept that the Italian, Italian historian of Greek and Roman philosophy, Giovanni Reale, used it for philosophy. It is the most noble science because either, either it speaks of God or it speaks to God. Proof is then the key concept of the whole Taijiman case because Taijiman is a manpai similar to a school with a recognizable and central spiritual dimension because the injustice it suffered and suffers come from, come from an eminent violation of freedom of religion or belief, because falsehood, contrary of truth, is the cause of its ordeal, and because truth on this injustice 
should be proclaimed in all its facets. Unfortunately, Taijiman is only one of the many victims of injustice caused by the denial of both truth and the right to it that we call religion and freedom of religion or belief. The denunciation of this is the core business of Bitter Winter, for example, and of many other, other organizations often represented by speakers in this series of webinars. I just need to cite an evident example. Anthropologists and archeologists say that the clearest sign of hominization or the process leading to the appearance of human beings as such on these planets are burial, which are high examples of care for elders and beloved ones based on the belief in an afterlife. Belgian historian of religion, Julien Ries, and evolutionist French paleontologist, Yves Copin, indicated that the irreducible symbolic and artistic capacity of representing the metaphysical is what makes human beings humans since the beginning. In what may be considered a logical recap of these insights, Welsh historian Christopher Dawson pointed out that the distinguished threat of the human being is religiousness, whose rites are normally performed, performed in groups. <clears throat> Dozen has a Latin term for it, cultus, which means worship, and it socially gives birth to culture. It is staggering that in its English cognate in the modern language cult is today used contrary to its origi original etymology, to stigmatize, to discriminate, and persecute religious groups that are arbitrarily defined as obscure and dangerous. And also that the equivalent nouns in, the other language, in other languages are words similar to sex, which is, non, which is a term non-offensive in English, but whose literally equivalence such as setta in Italian, sex in French, or secte in German, are used to fend and discriminate. Proof in language needs to be restored if we want, we want the truth to triumph in the realm of ideas and create justice in the life of human beings. Individuals and groups of all sorts and persuasions are in fact constantly discriminated through caricatures and parodies of their creed and belief. This happens in many countries of the world. It may come out of ignorance, but even ignorance is no excuse for violating the fundamental rights of human beings or voluntary misrepresentation. It happens in places of the world where dictatorial, tyrannical or totalitarian regimes repress individuals and groups, but it also happens in democracy where a legitimate concept, conception of secularity is twisted and deformed into an aggressive secularism. In totalitarian regimes, this frequently ends into harassment, violence, rape, torture, and killings. Unfortunately, also in liberal democracies, the result may easily be violence and death. While victims of these abuses and discrimination are violated in their most intimate human dignity, the crime that their perse perse persecutors commit is the most terrible. It is a crime against truth. Taiwan is a case in point. It is a country where democracy reigns after, di after a dictatorship came to an end. A country where transitional justice is trying to redress wrongs from the past a country that wants to present itself as a bastion of the rule of law in a geographical area of the world where this commodity is caught. Yet some corrupt branches of its government still perform their aggression against a peaceful spiritual movement such as Taiji Men. Until Taiji Men Shifu or Remesser and these are disciples, will be fully reintegrated in their human dignity and let be free to practice their spiritual way, living according, accordingly both as individuals and as a group, 
an attack against the truth will continue in Taiwan. Of course, this cannot be ignored. The, the time has then come for a broader international group of friends of human rights and freedom of religion and belief and the whole Taijiman movement to proclaim the truth on this serious case of blatant violation of religious liberty. Why does Taijiman need to suffer the consequences of a court case where accusations raised against it were proved as false? Why did the whole case, based on a lie, started almost 27 years ago in the first place? Who created this situation and for what reason? Who wants to continue carrying on this serious discrimination after all these years and why? There is a right to have these questions answered. It is part of the right to truth. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Marco, for sharing your thought with us from various perspectives, philosophical, religious, political, uh, etc. And uh, I will now introduce uh, uh, our next uh, speaker for the second session of this webinar, Dr. Carolina. Maria Hess, a researcher in uh, esotericism and New Religious Movement Center for Comparative Studies of Civilization at the Jagiellonian University in Poland. Floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mrs. Willy Fotre, for your introduction and both speakers, Rosita uh, Sorite and Marco Respinti, for your important insights. Uh, before we move to the second part of our meeting, I'd like to say, uh, say a few words. Um, as it was already underlined, today's webinar is a form of celebration of the United, uh, Nation, uh, United Nations International Day for the Right to the Truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of the victims. And this day led me to a lot of reflections that focus on two issues, the visibility and violence, but also together as visibility of the violence. Uh, I live in Poland where the place and cultural context have a big impact on the first associations with the team we are talking about today. Of course, here in Central and Eastern Europe, the main topic we think about right now uh, is uh, in this context is wars, both the great ones of the past uh, and um, the ones uh, that are on ongoing, uh, mostly Russian uh, invasion on the Ukraine. Uh, in the vicinity of Kraków in Lesser Poland, where my university is located, Unimaginable, unimaginable crimes took place during the Second World War, and the whole area is full of references to the memory of the victims. However, not all human rights violations and not all violations are of the same magnitude and visibility. When it comes to freedom of conscience and religion, there's also a lot of, uh, there was also a period of several decades in Poland where any uh, manifestations of spirituality, religious faith and practice were restricted um, exposed to numerous consequences or just banned by law. And as uh, Rosita already mentioned, in post-Soviet countries, it, it is not easy to talk about the truth about what happened in those decades even now. However, human rights are violated every day and all over the world. Uh, it is not only noticeable, uh, phys uh, it, it is not that that only noticeable phys physical violence is violence, but it's also obvious that human rights violations are not notice noticeable to everyone. Some seem to pass over it on a daily basis. Some of them are also easy to hide. Unjust taxes are such an elusive means of restraint, something that fits well within today's banal evil of the bureaucratic machine. Our task as researchers, academics, human rights activists, is to educate, publicize, and help wherever basic rights are violated. Special cases are those where violence takes covert forms, where matters are not known to a wider audience. Our task is to call violence what it is and to make visible those issues that have not been resolved but demand publicity, response, and closure. The Taijiman case is just a case, and this day is also a reminder of all of the wrongdoings, injustice, and human rights violations that the group has been facing for 26 years. Let's hope that the next day of truth, uh, let's emphasize the truth about what happened to you will be just memories from the past, not something that it's still happening. 
Thank you very much, and it's time to introduce the testimonies of the Taijim and Dizis. But before that, we are going to watch the second video today, Swiss Mountain Villa. I remember Shifu liked that place a lot. It had gorgeous views. We would sit there with Shifu and talk about how we would use the place for our future Qigong practice. Shimu was very considerate and said, if we get our villa ready, when overseas deeds come back, instead of finding hotels to stay, they will be able to stay in this villa. I can imagine that if this place had been developed according to Shifu's plan, it would have been a wonderful place. Speaking about this, my heart aches. It really aches. Because it's ruined like this. Now we have no way to save this place anymore. Who can restore our 25 wasted years? Who can restore this place for us? When I take a closer look, I found many meditation mats and I felt so upset. And how would Shifu feel if he sees this? He has put his heart and soul into this place. During the first criminal trial, Judge Zhao Ziyong asked Shi Fu to state his opinion. With tears in his eyes, Shi Fu said that as contemporary Zhang of Taiji Men, he would safeguard Taiji Men and his Dizi with his life, everything.
Regrettably, the NCB simply believed that the case involved tax evasion based on the prosecutor's indictment and imposed a restriction in 1997, preventing Taiji Men from disposing the villa. At the time, the validity of the tax bills had not been verified and the criminal decision had not been issued. How could they issue the tax bills? How could they impose double restrictions on the property? That was illegal. At the beginning of the criminal case, the prosecutor seized all the assets of Zhang Meiren and his wife, including a few thousand dollars in his bank account, leaving him with no money. The tax bureau, based on the prosecutor's indictment, issued sky-high tax bills without investigating the matter. Zhang Meiren did not have any money left to provide as collateral for the tax bills. Then an enforcement order would be carried out and his property could be sold. However, the tax bills have been invalid from the beginning and should not have been issued. For over 23 years, Zhang Meiren and his wife were unable to use this place. This property had been seized for such a long time, but Zhang Meiren still had to pay the property taxes. The government had seized the property for over 23 years and now this house is dilapidated and lies in ruins. According to the current regulations, you cannot reapply for a construction permit. It's impossible to demolish and rebuild the house. If you want to renovate, it will cost more than to rebuild. Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to introduce five testimonies of the Taiji Mendizi. Our first speaker is Mrs. Luna Ho. Mrs. Luna Ho, a Taiji Mendizi, uh, who is a primary school teacher, uh, will present her speech today, uh, which is titled The Light of True Never Goes Out. Hello. Yeah. Now you can speak. Okay, thank you. Doctor interviewing other professors, seniors and friends. Hi everyone. Today we are here to remember a group of saints and warriors who fought for human rights. 
as well as to encourage good days like theirs, to get the world's values back on track. It takes a lot of kindness, courage, and wisdom. Today, we continue to work bravely for human rights and justice, just as the science did. I'm Tai Jumendi. The Tai Jumen case has taught me about how painful it is to be denied our human rights. Officials from the National Taxation Bureau lied about the gift I gave to my master as a tribute to him in order to take land where Tai Chi Man planned to build its academy. The Constitution and the laws of ROC give people the best right to give gifts, and the courts have confirmed and ruled that the nature of the gift is a gift which isn't taxed by law, but some financial officials have lied, cheated, and used all kinds of public power against and to hurt Taiji men in order to get benefits, such as tax incentives. Taiji men these showed tens of thousands of certificates of gifts at a public hearing in the legislative UN on June 17, 2010. We, can, we keep talking to express and declare to prove that the gift was a gift. At the same time, legislators questions to first former famous minister Zhang Shenghe to face this unfair case and say that he would cancel the illegal tax bill within two months. But then he still didn't follow through and continued to use public power to cover up the truth. And the Secretary General of the Executive UN, Lin Johnson, called a meeting of all the departments. The resolution of the meeting mentioned that the indictment edic of Ho Kuan-ren's violation of law should be discarded and shouldn't be cited again. At the same time, the nature of the gift was confirmed by public announcements. Investigation to say that the investigation proved that the gift was a gift. The financial office, officials continued to lie and say that only half of the deeds said that the gift was a gift. I used to call or take a bus to the Taipei NTB every day to read the gift statements I wrote myself and ask how they knew what my shifu's gift was. They would always say that they were protecting my personal assets and wouldn't let me see my own information. They even had the police set up a long line of portable health barriers to keep us from getting into the NTB. Taiji men won 18 times during the relief process, but administrative court judge made one wrong decision because he didn't look at the end evidence and they didn't wait for the criminal court to decide what kind of gifts was given to the Shifu. This led the NTB and administrative enforcement agency to auction off our sacred land for self conservation and take it back into state ownership. If our Shifu hadn't taught us to tell the public the truth, a few low breaking officials would have taken Taiji Man's essence one by one, leaving nothing behind. These corrupt officials are spreading lies through the media, which makes me feel scared and nervous. I teach first grade. And become, because of this unfair case, the parents of my students have wrongly accused me of taking money from Taiji men. My colleague 
have also asked me questions and misunderstood me. Even though I tried to explain, they only believed what they heard in the media. Faced with completely skewed news reports on TV, first statements in the newspapers, and the fear that our academies would be shut down. I have no way to speak out, no way to stop the evil public power, and could only continue to suffer in silence like a dumb man testing bitter hearts. My human rights were seriously violated. In reality, every official can do the right thing and help the people, depending on whether or not he or she has a conscience. I'm thankful to the growing number of human rights fighters who are joining us and to the Bitter Winter magazine journalists for the helping to make justice stronger. I look up to my Shifu very much. Shifu always insists on doing the right thing, telling the truth and getting back to the truth for the sake of Taiji men and the people of the world. No one or group in Taiwan has ever insisted on this because if they did, they would be fined more money and have to face the huge state machine and public power whose criminal stru structure we can almost never stop. But my Shifu led us to do the right thing, spending a lot of time, money, blood and tears in a misunderstood struggle to protect Taiji men, the world's important cultural and spiritual assets. In exchange for waking up a lot of people in Taiwan to taxation, human rights, and justice, and saving a lot of people whose human rights were violated and who even died under this tyranny, I'm proud to be a Taiji man deeds. I'm an elementary school teacher. I always have trouble being sure and sticking to my principles, but I learned wisdom from my Shifu. My teacher, he teaches me to tell right from wrong and doing good deeds with conscience. So my teaching has become different. I look at what children's futures, hurts and thoughts really need, and I lay them with determin determination. I also deal with the parents of my students in this way, not giving in to their cuddling of their children and to communicate softly so that the children can learn the right values in each case, which is the hard process. I have to put in more effort to deal with the many small and big things that happen in their lives every day. During my time as a teacher, I'm dealt with many different kinds of parents and kids, and to help them better, it's hard and sometimes lonely to keep going. But doing what's right means true love if you do. I'm very thankful to my Shifu for giving me the chance to teach for almost 30 years and loving me with many wonderful memories and a clear conscience. And I really hope that human rights will be respected and the justice will be done in this world. Thank you all. It was uh, Luna Ho. Thank you very much. Uh, Luna, I said that you were denied of human rights uh, in the Taijiman case course and how painful it was. Uh, the lies from the National Taxation Bureau were di directly uh, uh, connected to you as they include your gifts to your master related to later confiscated land. But yet, as your Shifu led you to do, do the right thing, you keep going, uh, as you do as a primary school teacher, and we are proud to be Taijiman Diti. Thank you very much for your testimony. Now I'd like to introduce Lin Chin Te, a manager of the System Business Technology Department in the Electrical Drive System Engineering, who will present a testimony titled Prevention of Recurrence and Reparation for Serious Human Rights Violations.
the floor is yours. Hello, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Jinda Lin, currently in, uh, engaged in the electrical drive system engineering techn uh, technical manager. Today, I'm honored to participate in the UN International Day for the Right to the Truth uh, concerning those human rights violation and for the uh, dignity of uh, victims. To share my in, uh, insights on the uh, testimony of Tai Chi Man and the reputation of further serious human rights violations. Uh, I share, uh, I started uh, uh, participating uh, in the in search of the culture of Tai Chi Man in 1993. From observing and uh, participating uh, in the world's uh, deeds, uh, training, and activities of all the members of Tai Chi Man Qigong uh, Zhongli Academy. I randomly sampled more than 100 members of the Tai Chi Man Qigong uh, Zhongli Academy from uh, 1990 till uh, 1993. During uh, 1993, uh, they, are, uh, they all answered me uh, personally, uh, confirming that the reader uh, able to uh, represent it to the Sifu and the Sifu are uh, all out of the uh, joy of uh, respecting uh, Sifu from the heart. Uh, this is an act of gift from Taiwan's traditional culture. Uh, the uh, electric, uh, electricity and the water bill of the Tai Chi Men Qigong uh, Zhongyi Academy are all paid by the Sifu and the Sifu. Everything in the academy is used by our deeds, but the expensive are paid by Sifu and Simu. I inquired uh, and uh, learned uh, Sifu do not accept the red envelopes or offering from non deeds. So in 1993, uh, uh, I decided to present the red uh, envelope to the, my Sifu and Simu to express my uh, great, uh, gratitude. Uh, originally, uh, the uh, uh, salute was original a gift and even if it was test, uh, it was the uh, giver rather than the donor. But after a careful trial uh, by the court, the uh, Supreme Court uh, ruled in uh, 2007 that the uh, salutation uh, test uh, equivalent according, uh, according to the law. Uh, in, a, uh, in, addition, uh, in addition, I also share with you with the story of the Paris Bridge. One Paris of, uh, officer visited the Tai Chi Men Qigong Suling Academy at London Trees, and I participated in the uh, reception at the time. The Paris told me sincerely, uh, the first time he went to the Tai Chi Men, uh, it was when the uh, prosecutor directly the uh, prosecution to search the of the academy at the, same, uh, at the time. Uh, I heard uh, he heard the Tai Chi Man had uh, martial arts such as uh, such as hitting a uh, kettle in the air, uh, which call, uh, could cause this. So he did not uh, uh, dare to enter the inside of Tai Chi Man. He chose uh, and was arranged to hide in a past car, armed with a long time at all times, Lord with a. Uh, uh, Pull it and uh, should uh, if there's um, any uh, emergency. Uh, the first random uh, portal uh, and uh, a bridge the two Tai Chi men is actually because the supervisor asked to come to find out. Remember that uh, he heard the uh, chief inspector say that there are little uh, ghosts to avoid being uh, entangled uh, in the uh, extent of the legal ghosts. He cannot want uh, to uh, come from the heart. But uh, after many times of uh, plucking up the, the courage to dare to come, come in and uh, deal with the supervisor's assignment, uh, he told uh, he held the pulse gun, he his the package in his left uh, hand throughout the whole time. In case of an accident, he uh, could save his life. Use a short time to look uh, and the situation in the academy, as the senior brothers and the sisters are uh, some topics, uh, confirm that there are no problem and uh, go back to the police station to report to the chief after complete the test. The second random uh, portal with the Tai Chi Man because he want to come to again to find out 
with his policy experience, he saw that uh, we are uh, indeed the normal and the proper unit and uh, place. And uh, at, uh, at and at this time, he did this and talked to us in the academy. However, because of the identity of the policy, it's really inconvenient to accept the tea. Also, he saw that there should, uh, should be no problem with our tea, because, but because there are uh, rumors of blue water earlier. He said that he really did not uh, dare to drink the tea uh, we prepare uh, to avoid the accident of, uh, in case there is really room or water. However, after the random visit, he once again confirmed that the Tai Chi Man Qigong uh, Swing Academy was a normal and uh, elite autonomy place because he thinks that we are no more good citizens. So he told the, uh, the above story. Finally, from this story, we can see the dips and the bullets uh, of the impact of the Tai Chi Man uh, on just the case. And uh, at, that, uh, at, at that time, uh, it was also caused many great uh, in, uh, global uh, harm to the Sufu and the Simu of Tai Chi Men and the tens of thousands of families. Before practicing uh, Tai Chi Men, I was an ordin uh, ordin uh, ordinary person. After practicing in Tai Chi Men, I expressed uh, the uh, directness, uh, Chi of heaven and earth. And uh, the Chi was uh, uh, it is so terribly, uh, which, uh, with the conscience, I got the Tai Chi Men and uh, participate in, uh, in cultural exchange uh, activity and the legal and the uh, task debunk uh, activities. In these uh, processes, uh, solidarity and cooperation with good people naturally uh, beco uh, become uh, better and wiser. After many years of uh, presenting, in good uh, deeds, uh, uh, I have developed many good uh, habits. Uh, for example, uh, patiently and uh, greatly face uh, the face to the uh, some various problems. A uh, choice to uh, set with conscience is wisdom to unique and cooperate and uh, created every one with the glory. Uh, this good habit uh, helped me properly deal with worse family and the life affairs. Uh, when government uh, officials are wronged the Tai Chi Man in 1996, I will never forget the insult they made to me uh, personally. But then I uh, determined that the government uh, officials uh, have done wrong, serious uh, reversal of facts, uh, serious violation of human rights, serious violation of uh, ethics. Several, uh, serious violation of uh, defend the traditional beliefs and uh, concerns, serious violation of the uh, good uh, ability and uh, intelligence of government officials. When this case is uh, debilitated uh, in the future, it will be difficult uh, for the government to make uh, a made and uh, compensate. Uh, in addition, uh, English contract for electrical drive system engineering Large compensation costs are used uh, through the serious and hard compensation costs. Uh, we remind that every effort, every effort must be made uh, to complete and uh, the uh, correction and the improvement of errors as soon as possible. And the two are uh, purpose reasonable and uh, enforceable uh, compensations to uh, ensure the implementation of prevent of uh, requirements. Review of Tai Chi Man National, uh, uh, Taiwan uh, National Attention uh, Program, uh, sent the comprehensive incoming test for 1991, 1993, till 1996. Found huge test station to correction to level, but the, uh, only leave the 1992 test bill of the same nature alone. Uh, abuse the, is the power to illi uh, illegal uh, language of Tai Chi Man things. Uh, one, how use the, uh, how should the government compensate and uh, uh, for the serious insult caused by the long years caused by the unjust case? Uh, second, 
how should the government compensate the large number of philosophy and the mentally uh, uh, people? I sincerely uh, appeal to government officials to size the uh, opportunity uh, to immediately create illegal test uh, sanctions and restore the reputation of Tai Chi Man deeds to make a, a, bend, a prevent the measure will also be uh, implemented to prevent the recurrence of serious human rights violation of power, uh, public power. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chin Talin. Uh, in relation to your occupation, you said that uh, in the international English contracts for ele electrical drive system engineering, large compensations clauses are used. Uh, this is not the case of the victims of the unjust taxes, uh, like uh, in the Taiji Man case. Uh, so you ask um, how should the government compensate uh, for the serious insult insults uh, caused by the long years caused by this unjust cases, but also how should the government compensate the large number of physically and mentally traumatized people, uh, which is very important. And you appeal to government officials to immediately correct illegal tax sanctions and restore a reputation of Taiji men to prevent the recurrence of serious human rights violations by the public power. Thank you very much for your speech. So now the third testimony will be presented by Mrs. Tina Lee. Tina Lee is a designer and a Taiji men DC. Uh, Tina, please, the floor is yours. Hello to everyone. I know online. I'm from the lovely island of Taiwan, which was once called Formosa. I often hear my family friend say that I love the food at Taiwan's night market, the beautiful sunrise in Taichung and Hualien the convenience store, and most of all, the people. I was very shocked as a child growing up in Taiwan. So when people on the street ask me for decision, I would get scared and say that I didn't know. I was even too afraid to offer my seat to an early person on the bus. Sing didn't start to get better, for me, uni, I began to learn Chico and life lesson from my Shifu. My Shifu started consciousness best moment in 2014, and my life started to change after that. I started pressing past my own limits and became more brave. I joined the tech and like it, refund ring and went out on the street to fight for friends and Justin. When I went skydiving for the first time in Australia, I met a person from Taiwan who worked there. He said that he didn't like Taiwan because the government had, be, had to leave his family, even though he father on piece of land that wasn't being used for business. They got a business tax fee that was wrong. Even though he gave the tax public proof and aggressions, they didn't care. So he father had to practice for a friend that means for a long time. This made me of something I learned in my middle school since class. The people's duty is to pay tax, and the constitution protects the right of a people. People should pay tax the way the law says, and the government should also correct tax the way the law says. In victory, so it often calls a guessing what is right in books. I went to the International Relatural Fitness Summit in Washington, D.C. at the beginning of 2023. It was a meeting of important leaders in human rights, labor freedom, 
policies in many groups that have been persuaded because of their beliefs of protection. Down the IRF summit, we also had a framing call during action to ban the abuse of justice and tax law by seeking to persecute human rights, the Tai Chi man cats. My Sifu, Dr. Hong Dao Ju, announced the international decision to ban the abuse of justice and tax law by seeking to progress human rights, which was joined direct by the World City Federation NGO and the Taiji Man Qigong Academy. We met December 19, International Day to Ban Abroad Adjusting and Test Law by State to Progress Human Rights. And ask everyone in the world to work together to watch how Public power is used and starting from urban layer power to take over our heart human rights. I can still remember the vote for the meeting for court in Myanmar. Let the words say all as men at first conference. Myanmar's young people stole out and asked for more coverage and people to help them. I see picture of home and school that had been destroyed and my heart free hearing. We all did the best of caution together and they then finished smile. At that moment, I think that we had all come together with courage and season of Finish and let our energy and rising car help change their terrible situation. The first case against Taiji men of been going on for more than 20 years. Since I was in college, I have been making my cars on the street. We will have gone from being coffees and said to working as professional will scaring from many different countries. We still speak out for the tool. We have permitted the that we are not grading and don't want any tax. But the problem of who say use ugly tax can be star private government. They also acquire of Thai Jimin's land planning for safe cooperation. The Taiwan Nation Taxes Boarding and the Administration in for the question accuracy have been brought by setting out wrong tax fee and taking and same people's provision where their permission. The two has been hit, hidden by the ruling party and the major news audit. People can only run on social media, press letters, automation on the street, protection and risk from around the world. How many more? Taiwanese people will end up on the street or ever keep themselves because of his next gen tech law will the help of firm actress and scarred who stand out for justice. In a definite, the people should be the most important thing. Today, my biggest hope is that the people of Taiwan will stand together, be ready to defend human rights. We can't fight be ourselves to save our country. We need to work together like Hong Kong, the USA, and France. The truth is the only 
think that will always be so. Brownless will always be fast. Seeing my sifu talk his DJ to fast, it will love and courage ever because of an unique just case and talk he did to spare love and peace all over the world. This current help for the people of the country and the world, driving my heart of dressing and get up. Shifu and DJ continue to move for, for love together. I call on the government of Taiwan to hide the courage to face their mistake, Tara to free one, and give the people back their dignity and human rights. Let's work to make our country successful and run a better history. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, Tina, you mentioned that you were shy since uh, childhood, but you transformed in the Taiji Man, the conscious based movement, and you started to break through your own limitations and become more courageous. And uh, it's related to that that you've been advocating the case of the movement on the streets since your university days uh, until today, alongside uh, with scholars from various countries uh, right now, and you continue to speak the, uh, for the truth. Uh, you called on the Taiwan government to have the courage for to face mistakes, reveal the truth, rectify injustice, and to restore dignity and human rights to the people. Thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, now let me introduce you uh, to Dina Lai, uh, who will share her insights on today's topic. Dina, uh, who is uh, is a research assistant and a Taiji Mendizi, will present the fourth testimony. Uh, please, Dina, uh, the floor is yours. Hello, moderator, panelists, and online friends. I am a research assistant, and I am honored to have the opportunity to share my insight on this important day. First of all, I would like to remember the memory of the Honorable Arthur Romero, who was assassinated on March 24, 1980, while celebrating mass, Trin Romero constantly denounced the atrocity of the powers that be and the injustice of society, saying, I must suffer with those who are abused, with those who are missing, with those who are forced to leave their homes. A month before Trin Romero was assassinated, he said, I am constantly threatened with death. A bishop can die, but the church that belongs to a people and to God does not die. As a Christian, I do not believe that there is no resurrection after death, and if they kill me, I will rise again among the people of East Swado. During his beatification ceremony at the Mexican in 2018, Pope Francis were the ones then sent were by String Romero when he was assassinated at the memorial. I am in awe of the fearlessness of Trin Romero, who lived and died a mother for justice and righteousness. And I believe that his righteousness and holy soul is alive in heaven and his spirit life on. I am a Taiji Man Dizi, my shifu and brothers and sister of Taiji Man have been persecuted by both the state criminal law and taxation since December 19, 1999 and have been suffering for over 26 years now. This has caused a great controversy. 
Cruz Kenneth Jackson, a U.S. human rights lawyer and professor at Tem Temple University School of Law, said, I have never seen so many violations of law as in Taijiman case. It is not according with the proper legal procedure to seize a person's financial resource without giving him the opportunity to expand the source of his financial resource and then to investigate and prosecute him. The Taiwan government has set up an interdepartmental group to meet and agree to lawfully resolve the prosecution of Tai Jiman through investigation, but the government falsified the investigation results, with, which is also against the proper legal procedure after the High Administrative Court and the Supreme Administrative Court have ruled in favor of Tai Chi Men. They send the original panelists back, back to the National Tax Bureau. And these tax collectors are the one who receive bonus for pursuing. This is even more against the proper legal procedure. Even though my Shifu, Dr. Hong Daozi, was suffering, he was still dedicated to the peace of the world and dedicated his life to promoting the culture of the love and peace. What touched me the most was that in 2001, when Dr. Hong Daozi and Tai Jiman Dizu were invited to attend the 54th Annual United Nations Angel DPI Conference, the September 11 territory attack in the United States happened. On September 16, Dr. Hong Daozi and Tai Jiman Dizu stayed in New York to hold a blazing summer seminary to soothe the heart of the people and in keeping with the spirit of commitment of martial art practitioner, they went to Hawaii to hold a culture feat and blessing ceremony on September 16 at the Hawaii Theater in Honolulu. Dr. Hong Daozi rang the bell to signify the sound of the bell of peace bring the blessing of peace and stability and the world's billions of living beings are all brothers and sisters. The mayor of Honolulu, Mr. Robert Maria, was very moved and thanked Dr. Hong Daozi and Tai Jiman Dizu for their contribution to world peace and praised Dr. Hong Daozi as an outstanding leader. In Taiwan, past president and head of state have recognized the culture promotion of Dr. Hong Daozi and Tai Jiman Dizu. President Tsai Ing-wen commented, under the leadership of Dr. Hong Daozi, Tai Chi Man has activity gone global to do national diplomacy for Taiwan, enhance Taiwan's international visibility. Dr. Rene Waterloo, president of the United Nations NGO World Citizen said, he has been working on human rights for a decade and has never seen a persecuted group that has no head in its heart like Tai Chi Man. It is a pity like that Tai Chi Man is trapped by the case that would have made a greater contribution to the world. I was older originally an ordinary person who lived my life as I went along. It was my Shifu Dr. Hong Daozi who expanded my heart and told me that Sarai 
is the purpose of life and helping others is the essence of happiness. This has made my life more valuable. It's when my shifu, Dr. Hong Dao Ji Hu, opened my eyes and let me and my brother and sister of Tai Chi Man to spread the message of love and peace around the world, allowing me to live the true beauty of life. I would like to appeal to President Tai Ing Wen that Tai Chi Man is Tai Chi Man culture is a national treasure and the light of the world. Please immediately vindicate the fact Tai Chi Man case and return it to its sacred place of practice. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dina. Uh, you said that you are a Taijiman Dizi and your Shifu and brothers and sisters of Taijiman um, have been persecuted for both uh, the state, criminal law and taxation for over 26 years now. But nevertheless, uh, you are still dedicated to the peace of the world and to promoting the culture of love and peace. Um, you called to immediately close the Taijiman case so the movement could return uh, uh, to its uh, sacred place uh, of practice. Uh, thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, and now I would like to introduce uh, our uh, final uh, speaker in this part, uh, Stephen Du, uh, an application engineer, but also a volunteer for the Law and Tax Reform League and the Taiji Mendizi. Uh, he will now introduce the, the final testimony uh, titled "Only by eliminating the illegal reward system can people people's rights to life and property be protected." Please, Stephen, the floor is yours. Hi, Professor Massimo, or professors, seniors, and friend. I'm really glad that I have this opportunity to join this forum. I'm an engineer and I also work as a volunteer for the Tax and Legal Reform League. Normally, I host a YouTube programs that inspire audience members to take to care deeply about their own rights and what the government does. Today, the topic is about the persecution of human rights and upholding victims' dignity. My biggest concern is how an illegal bonus system could jeopardize people's right to life, property, and even their freedom of religion. In Taiwan, most people know that the White Terror, or 2 to an event, took place 76 years ago. A media called Taro News stated that during the period of White Terror, thousands more inhabitants vanished, abused, or were imprisoned, even died probably because of what was considered as inappropriate remarks. There were even bonuses for reporting spy at that time. How many families have been shattered as a result of this anonymous bonuses system? Bonuses were given to whistleblowers as well as units and the personnel handling cases such as the Investigation Bureau, Security Headquarters, and even the Ministry of National Defense. It does sound absolutely incredible now. It just happened. That's why I want to put emphasis on it. The tragedies that will be caused by the inappropriate incentive bonuses system. In another case, Taijiman Qigong Academy is a Qigong martial arts Menpai, licensed by the Ministry of the Interior and registered with the Chinese Martial Arts Federation. In 1996, prosecutor Ho Quanren conducted an illegal search, abused his authority, and the Taijiman was persecuted by this way. On the one hand, he used illegal method to smear Taiji men, and on the other hand, he used the tax as an instrument of torture and fabricated the tax bills without any investigation. 
The Taijiman case was affirmed in 2007 after 10 years and three months for judicial trials. Taijiman is innocent. No violation of the tax collection law. Practice uniform. There is no connection between the Shifu and his wife because the uniform were provided as a mutual aid between deeds rather than financial gain. What's more, the government has compensated both Shifu and deeds for unjust imprisonment. The Taijiman case was also mentioned in Third Control Yuan Human Rights Work Summary Report as major human rights protection case. It is abundantly clear that the National Taxation Bureau has an error in their assessment. The tax bills in question appears to be entirely fabricated, with the proceeds category also being falsified. Despite this. The National Taxation Bureau remains insistent on seizing Tai Jiman's property and land, based on these fabricated bills. What even more ridiculous is that promotions were given to everyone who was involved in this illegality, and that they all made a ton of money. Isn't this situation similar to what happened in White Tower event? Crystal blowers receive bonuses, and everyone who deal with have them profit. Tax case continues to reoccur, and many people contact the Tax and the Legal Reform League to complain about receiving excessive amount of tax bills. The well-known case, including Ye Yangchun, the National Taxation Bureau didn't acknowledge the investment, despite the fact. That it was clearly technology investment. The stock was treated as a salary income, which result in over four million tax fines. He was also prohibited from leaving the country at that time, which ultimately caused him to split it from his wife and kids. The latest case I want to share is Zheng Junyuan case. Due to the poor design, the dehumidifier in Professor's home spontaneously caught fire, causing the house and belongings to be burned to the ground. The home appliance manufacturer paid a compensation for one million dollars for the loss, but the National Taxation Bureau considered the compensation to be income. And the imposed a penalty of more than two hundred thousand dollars on Professor. It is unbelievable. In Taiwan, many people have been a victim of tax disasters, such as Zhen,、uh, Mr. Zhong, Li Yongxian, Huang Wenhuang, and Wu Peichun. Many people still lack、uh, the ability to speak out. Take Huang Wenhuang case as example. He is a lawyer. Even lawyers cannot protect themselves and suffer from the persecution of the tax authorities. The power of the National Taxation Bureau is so great that it overrides the law and surpass even the authority of the five branches of government. The UN Secretary General said, "The truth is an empowering and a healing force." We embarrass it in the past, the present, and the future. The Tutu Air accident happened 76 years ago. Makes us understand the value of democracy, the value of the truth. In 2023, we will not be arrested in Taiwan for what we said, but taxpayers may force unfairness as the result of illegal tax bill. Because of the poor remedy system and the endless administrative relief, people may lose money, property, and become homeless, helpless unless you pay it. In Taiwan, unjust tax bill is just like a protect protection racket. Only a fair and just system can prevent tragedies from recurring. The government should rehabilitate the unjust case. Caused by the previous improper bonuses system, 
It is the only way to protect the victim's dignity. It is what I want to share. Thanks all. Thank you very much, Stephen. You said that you are an engineer and also you work as a volunteer for the Law and Tax Reform League, but you also host your YouTube programs that inspire a wider audience uh, to care deeply for their uh, own rights, but also about the uh, general knowledge about what's happening in the country. And in this context, you show us many examples, uh, incredible, of tax uh, unjust cases. And um, you said that even if many things changed during the rest, last decades and in 2023, no one will be arrested in Taiwan right now uh, for what they said. Uh, it's still um, a lot of things to do and uh, taxpayers pay may face unfairness as a result of illegal tax bill, uh, which leaves uh, people, after all, with no dignity. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your speech. Uh, yeah, we got, um, so um, today we uh, listened to five testimonies of uh, Taiji Mendizis who are personally people of various occupations, uh, primarily school teacher, manager in the electric drive uh, system engineering, designer, research assistant, and uh, application engineer who is also a volunteer for the Law and Tax Reform League. Uh, it is always very important and moving uh, that in the case of violations of human rights, we could hear speeches of people who are being personally harmed uh, in many ways for so long. Everyone agrees that the unjust tax case and uh, everything that accompany it, uh, especially when it takes over two decades, uh, viol violates the human rights of the freedom of the conscience uh, and that the case involved many various types of violence. Mm. I think uh, we only have time left for the uh, conclusions right now of the Professor Massimo Introvigne. Uh, so I will uh, give the floor to Professor Introvigne. Thank you. And uh, many speakers have already reminded us that uh, the International Day for the Right to Truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of the victim is observed on March 24, because on March 24, 1980, the Catholic uh, Archbishop of San Salvador, Oscar Arnulfo Romero, was uh, uh, assassinated. And it's a memory uh, very much present in Latin America. I'm currently in Buenos Aires, where I'm uh, attending the third uh, uh, UNESCO Forum on Human Rights. And uh, the memory of Archbishop uh, Romero is so much present in uh, Latin America and remains a source of inspiration. In concluding this webinar, I would like to reflect on one of his uh, most uh, famous homilies of Monsignor Romero, a sermon he pronounced in the Cathedral of San Salvador on September 10, 1978. Now this homily is remembered today because it took a stand against the Marxist uh, turn of the Sandinista movement in uh, Nicaragua, led by Daniel Ortega. And since Ortega, after so many years, is still in power in Nicaragua today, and is guilty himself for gross human rights violations, including a brutal repression of uh, religious liberty, it is worth remembering that Romero, while denouncing the brutality of right-wing uh, military regimes, did warn against the danger of Nicaraguan Marxism. In the homily, Romero characterized the possibility of a communist regime in nearby Nicaragua as a threat we cannot ignore. The danger in Nicaragua, he said, is great. 
and he said we are anti-Marxists by reason of our gospel principles. On the other hand, Romero did not believe that anti-communism, which he regarded as entirely legitimate, might justify human rights violations and injustice by regimes that claim to be against Marxism. The best anti-Marxism is a more just society, he said. In the same homily, Romero stated that the Catholic Church supports, he said, applauds, encourages whatever is good. She consoles the victims of assaults and injustice, and she also denounces the atrocities, the disappearances, the tortures, and the social injustice. In other words, Romero's Catholic position asks for the truth about the atrocities and injustices perpetrated by the military regime in El Salvador, which eventually got him killed. Romero's position was rooted in an important religious principle, prophecy. He insisted that women, women and men of God have a prophetic role. But what did it mean? There is a common misunderstanding about the word prophecy. In common language today, a prophet is somebody who is able to predict the future. Like many other words of our language, prophet is the English transliteration of a Greek word, prophetes. Fetes in Greek means um, speaker, one who speaks, and pro means before. But just before, as, but just as it happens in English, before in Greek has two different meanings. I may tell you the result of the next soccer game before it uh, happens, and I will be a prophet in the sense that I know the result of a game which has not been played yet. But uh, I can simply speak before a large audience. That doesn't mean that I speak before the audience gather. It means that I speak in front of a large audience, which is another meeting of both the Greek pro and the English before. So a prophet may be something, somebody who speaks before something happens, or maybe uh, somebody who speaks in front of a large crowd, meaning somebody who proclaims the truth openly, boldly, and in front of everybody. This is not a question of uh, philology or linguistics. Actually, it's a question of uh, history of religions. In the 1978 homily, Romero made precisely the point that in the Jewish and Christian traditions, and he may have added the, the uh, Islamic one, although some prophets did make predictions uh, uh, about the future, most did not. They were prophets not because they had the special gift of predicting the future, which is very rare, but because they had the bravery of telling the truth before the crowds, in front of the crowds, which the Bible and the Quran as well regard as more important than making predictions uh, about uh, the future. Often prophets, those who spoke in front, before the crowds, told unpleasant truths and ended up being killed. Something uh, Romero, prophetically, the word here is very much appropriate, reminded his audience of less than two years before being assassinated himself. While predicting the future is a rare gift, testifying for the truth 
is a duty for every woman and every man of conscience. The archbishop mentioned him that his opponents called him Romero the prophet to ridicule him. And he answered, when some people scornfully say that I think I'm a prophet, I respond, God be praised, you also must become one. Every Christian, the whole of God's people, every family must develop a prophetic sense. A prophet, Romero added, is one who has an undisturbed conscience. And this is a very interesting statement. Only those who are firmly rooted in conscience as their moral compass might calmly tell the truth about injustice and corruption, no matter the risks. And risks there are, since prophets easily make enemies. As Romero noted, and he might as well have spoken about himself, most prophets were persecuted, not a few were killed. This is also the story of Taiji Men, Shifu, and Ditsi. They are prophetic voices, not in the sense that they predict the future, but uh, in the more uh, fundamental meaning of the word prophet indicating those who proclaim the truth because they are firmly grounded in their own conscience. Even if they do not generally predict the future, they may easily make at least one prediction, that their undisturbed conscience, as Romero put it, will very much disturb corrupt politicians and bureaucrats, who will in turn disturb the prophets by persecuting them. We are here today to stop persecution. As this webinar has proved, the first step when trying to stop an injustice is telling the truth about it. We have just started telling the truth we scholars and we dizzy of Taiji men about the case. We should continue in this endeavor and we should be persuaded that it is a genuinely prophetic one. In this sense, we are all prophets, as Romero said, prophets for truth, prophets for justice, and prophets for conscience. And I believe this concludes our webinar, but our webinars are never really concluded because there is a final video about the uh, very recent uh, trip of uh, Taiji Men Diz bringing uh, peace and love to Turkey. Thank you. Your visit to Turkey after the earthquake is very, very important because the positive energy is accumulated, accumulated between inside the hearts of the people. Uh, in Turkish language, we say not heart but gönül. Gönül means that inside your body, everything, richness inside your body. So, with your visit, with your arrivals, we are accumulating this positive energy inside us, in, in our gönül. Actually, uh, I lost my uh, a lot of friends uh, in earthquake and uh, I'm very sad about that. Uh, 
uh, and to my also uh, old friends, all my uh, families. And uh, this is a very difficult situation for us. And um, uh, <laughs> I'm very emotional right now, but uh, thank you for your help, all your help. We are journalists and uh, we are must do something about peace and uh, love for uh, all people because uh, journalists jobs about uh, <clears throat> peace actually because uh, the world's very difficult for the humans and uh, we must uh, easier to be uh, for our humans today we saw that uh, here the the po po uh, they are sending to us for the good and positive vibes to Turkish people who affected for the earthquake. It was really, really big and it was really, the words cannot express the, how much people are suffering there. There is a one thing left that was each positive vibes and love, which is the important for the people are going to be, feel good and feel very safe too. This day, Paul had sending us to, as I said, the good greetings, the good message, like a love and like a peace. This is the important things not only for the these two, nowadays Turkish people, also in Turkey. These all need one. I mean, all over the world, we need to that peaceful and loving life.